I can't fuck with snakes. I ain't all the way back from my people. I pray out for for fame. I'm finna turn up and get they ass a taste. I thought I was global. They screaming my name. I'm everywhere like I'm the Chicago way. Way. Yo, what's poppin'? Yeah, man, I'm cool, man. What you want? Take a play, man. What's up with you? Man, I'm doing good, bro. You know, I'm sick as hell that my main page got quiet, but, you know, I'm just thugging it out. Yeah, for sure. That's what's up. That's what's up. I see you working hard. Yeah. Yeah, you know. Got to. Shit, but uh, I don't want to take out too much. I don't want to take too much time. Off, off on this intro or whatnot. So, like before, before we get into this, I'm gonna just let everybody know. I'm just we doing a quick interview with with um THF Villa. So I'm gonna start it off like this. So um, like first off, how you doing though? How you doing though, man? I'm alright, bro. You know I'm alright, man. Alright, bro. So uh, I'm gonna get right. I'm gonna just get right to it, bro. So like, considering your name is THF, you know you're from the hood known as Four Six. So it's like. How was it like growing up there? I mean, it's pretty much like growing up anywhere for real, man. A lot of love, right. a lot, a, a, a lot of, a lot of love, more love than anything, though. I can say that for real, you know. It wasn't like growing up nowadays. You feel me? Where you know niggas doing anything, ain't no guidance, no leadership, and shit like that. So you know, I can't, I can't really say nothing bad about it. For the most part, though, you know. I take my hat off to the niggas who came before me because they showed a nigga how to move and how to be, you feel me? I feel you. So, so like, you said, so what'd you say, like, you had OGs? What'd you say, bro? I said, would you say you had OGs? Yeah, for sure, for sure. That's that's one thing that that that, that we had that that it ain't nothing right, it went, we don't have right now, as you know. Like I said, a little leadership, shit like that, you know, it wasn't no... Oh man, it, it's 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 school hours and a nigga could be outside running around talking about we getting high, you know where the where the perk set and where the lean and shit like that. Cause you know the niggas who I come up under, if they caught you outside, we was hiding from them just like we was hiding from our parents and shit. You know. <laughs> okay, so it was different back then. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Shit, I could tell like so. I could tell like there was more guidance. You could say. Yeah, a lot more guidance. Uh, just. You know, like I said, there's a lot of leadership, you know, even though it was the streets. Okay. Uh, motherfucker still wanted you to do the right thing and what was right. You know what I mean? Like I said, a motherfucker wasn't no hanging outside and at school hours. Like I said, we ducking from these niggas the same way we hide from our parents and shit. So, motherfucker catch you outside, you ain't in school, you're supposed to be in school, a nigga beat your ass and take you to school. And, and that's, that's some righteous shit right there. All right, man. So, like, after doing some homework on you, I found out, and this may may not be a hundred percent true. I'm not sure, but like, uh, I heard that you used to be the security guard for your neighborhood. So, is that true? Hell no, no man. I work. Look, I work one day in the building. Literally one day. You feel me? And quiet as kept. Like I was like 16 doing that shit. I wasn't even supposed to be the security guard. It just so happened that. You know, somebody in my family was fucking with a nigga who owned a security company, and he was trying to show me a better way. That's it. That's all. That's it. That's all. So you just, you just basically all that security for guard for my neighborhood, <laughs> all that old goofy ass shit that niggas here. One of motherfucking security guard for my neighborhood. Nigga, I ran through the neighborhood before half of the niggas who known for being in the neighborhood. Ain't no half of the niggas. Ninety five percent of the niggas who known for being in my neighborhood, they watch me do what I do before they was even able to do what they did. You feel me? All right, so uh, so you said like they was trying to show you a better way. So, would you say that uh, you was kind of looking for a different way other than the streets before you hopped in it? Yeah, nah, see, bro, I've been in the streets all my life, bro. I caught my first case when I was nine years old. You feel me? Mm. It wasn't even that I was trying. It, it, it's just something that's instilled in me. You feel me? As that makes far sense. as as far as you know. Being in the streets, the streets is cool, but everybody in the world know what come with the streets. How many niggas you know can say they been in the streets or they did shit in the streets and, you know, it, it didn't come with going to prison or, you know, being fucked up, shot, paralyzed, shit like that. You see this shit every day and it's come from niggas not having no guidance, you feel me? I take my hat off to the niggas who showed me the shit that they showed me because I got a chance to see 
not just the street side, but the business aspect of life too. So it gave me both ends of the fence. So, you know, at some point, I just chose to steer the wrong, to go the wrong direction and, 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 and do some of the shit that I was seeing because you become a product of your environment for real. Most definitely, man. So with all that going on, how'd you get into rapping? I always been into rapping, you feel me? I used to listen to Sly and Bump, you know, on my way to school in the morning when I was getting ready for school and shit. I used to listen to Sly and Bump and I was like, man, I could do that shit. So a lot of motherfuckers who know me who went to school with me and shit, they'll tell you, like, you know, dude been rapping since forever. I used to be in school in the lunchroom rapping and motherfuckers was standing around listening to me rap and shit. So that was something that just like music was just a part of my life, you know, growing up from the beginning. You feel me? Like I always been attracted to music. Even my mama always played old school music, dusties and shit. So like music was just something that was therapeutic for me. Okay, so you a music head. You was always in the music. You said what, bro? I said so like you a music head. You was always into music. Always, my whole life. Okay, so with, with rapping, like I heard you used to be doing battle raps in the barbershop, so how'd you get into doing that? And like, how often would you do those? Nah, I, I did I did, I did, did a couple battle raps. Like, I did two, I think. The first time I ever did a battle rap, uh, shout out to Ogman, I had battle rap with Ogman, little brother. And at this time, I thought I was real nice with the music with the rapping shit, which I was, but I had never battle rap. So I didn't know that it was, you know, two different aspects. And when it came to the battle rap, I just stepped in some shit and dude fucked me up. He fucked me up so bad that it made me go back and reevaluate how I wrote music. You feel uh, me? Like I instead see. of just writing music, I kind of started writing music as to, you know, if I, if I was to be called out by a motherfucker to say, oh yeah, he could rap better than me. I started writing music to the point where it's music, but I could also use it if a motherfucker wanted to battle. And like I said, I okay. had two I had two battles my whole life. That battle in the barber shop, I had literally just got out the county. And uh the nigga who I was battling, he was the champ. And the the, the person who owned a uh, barber shop, shout out to Cutter. Cutter was like, Man, he he had been asking me to come up there because dude had been winning and winning. He like, Man, I want you to come up here and battle this nigga. He think he nice. By this time, dude had already fucked me up, probably like six months i want to say yeah fuck me up probably like six seven months before that so by that time i had you know got my pins together to where like i said if a motherfucker did want to battle i could spit some shit that i had wrote that was music but in a battle aspect if i needed to so when i um stepped one in a barber shop like i said i had just got out the county and i had a motherfucker called me and told me to come up there and i went up there and that's how that came about but that was my only battle on camera. The one before that, it wasn't on camera. But dude, fuck me up. He made me think about that. Like, damn. Yeah, yeah. I just, I just jumped into some shit thinking I'm nice, and this nigga, he performing. Like, he made me feel like shit. So after that, I'm like, fuck that. I'm gonna start writing my music a little bit harder, a little bit more aggressive. So if a motherfucker ever try to say, oh yeah, he nicer than you, and it come time to rap, you feel me? I could spit it, and it'll still be in a battle form for real. Most of death, and I and I and I could and I could see and I could see why, like I I could see how like you got into that, because like, I remember um, when Montana Three Hundred was basically calling out people saying that he was the best, you know, he was the most lyrical. You had stepped up to the challenge, basically, like you was, you know. So it was so, with with that was that like was what was you doing the battle rap and going back basically like. Uh, made for situations like that, just like if somebody was to be like, "I'm the best," you gonna you gonna step to them and be like, "Nah, I got I got some shit for you." Yeah, for sure. Like I said, man, dude, I don't remember the nigga name, but I had my peoples with me. He had his peoples with him, and to my aspect, I'm thinking like, "Damn, you know, I'm nice. I know my shit nice. My bars, my delivery, you know, it's my all my shit together." But Battling and rapping is two different things. That shit come with a lot of extra shit. So yeah, yeah. I have put I have put two and two together. Like man, fuck that. Next time a motherfucker step to me, I'm gonna be fully prepared no matter what. So I start writing just flat out music, and I start putting it in the aspect as if I was talking to a motherfucker 
or something. So when that type of situation arrives, because for real, for real, I'm the type of nigga, bro, I don't like to lose at nothing. I don't give a fuck what it is. If, 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 I don't give a fuck what's going on. If we got them in pitching pennies or got them in shooting paper balls in the back, in the trash can, I hate to lose at anything. So you mm, feel me? when that okay. shit transpired, it just opened my eyes and made me look at, as far as battle rap it made me look at it a little different like it ain't as easy as it seems you know this shit come with a little bit more than than than, than what a motherfucker getting for real that was definitely man all right so moving away from that uh you, you 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 just spoke a little bit about your hood and it's obviously changed from back then to now but what could you say is the best thing best thing about it right now the best thing about it, it ain't really shit the best thing about it right now. You pay attention, everybody doing their own thing, bro. And that's what kind of fucked, that's what fucked us as, as far as the music industry or even trying to really pursue this shit the, the right way because everybody doing their own thing. But then you look at other motherfuckers, these niggas, everybody together, they love each other, you feel me? They treat each other totally different. But then you got certain motherfuckers who still fuck with each other, but niggas ain't doing songs together. You don't see niggas around each other doing videos. You got a little here and there. Certain motherfuckers still rocking out and shit, but for real, for real, bro, that's the worst part about the shit. Like, it ain't no unity in this shit, for real. Mm. Like, you feel like everybody, like, since everybody's so focused on doing their own thing, um, it's like, it can't, it's not as big as it could be. Because... Yeah, hell yeah, because... Yeah. You know, people look at that type of shit, you feel me? Even the, even, the, even the big wigs in the music industry, they look at that type of shit like, damn, okay, this nigga nice, but he doing this shit by himself. While all the niggas that, who claiming the same thing, who got the same tags on their name, these niggas ain't together. They ain't showing nobody no love. They ain't, certain niggas don't post your shit, don't share each other's shit. You got niggas who nice, bro. Ain't In my opinion, bro, it ain't a, a, a different group or a set of motherfuckers from my city who fucking with us on the rap. We got Muda, we got twin, the both of the twins. We got motherfucking G-Baby, me, you got Zoo, you got TP. You got so many motherfuckers who got so much talent and shit, but to the outside people looking in, it look like we don't fuck with each other. You feel me? I yeah, talk I, to I, Zoo I all the time. Yeah. I talk to TP. I talk to everybody. We, we all talk to each other. We all got love for each other, but on on the outside looking in, people like, man, them niggas don't even fuck with each other. So why would we even fuck with them? Why would we take a chance uh, on see. investing in what they got going on? And these niggas ain't even, you know, you don't see these niggas together. They ain't taking no pictures together. They ain't in the studio together. So, you know, that shit really put a damp on the whole situation because ain't nobody in the city fucking with us, bro. You go get anybody and match them up however you want to match them up, bro. When it comes to this harmonizing and melody shit, ain't nobody fucking with Twin. Ain't nobody fucking with Lil Twin. Or ain't nobody G -Baby. fucking with G-Baby. Ain't nobody yeah. fucking with us. Nobody. Yeah. Not no area, no group, and they don't take nothing from nobody else. None of these niggas. Not nobody from the old. Not nobody from motherfucking none of the ops. Nobody. The niggas who close to us or we fucking. They don't, ain't nobody fucking with us with this music shit, bro. But it's hard because... It looked like it ain't no unity in this shit. You feel me? I feel you. There's a lot of talent. Niggas are getting. I don't there, mean. Man. I don't mean to cut you, but niggas will get together to go slide on the motherfucking, go try to do something crazy. But niggas don't get together to uplift each other and push each other to be the best that they can be. And that's what make the shit so fucked up and watered down for real. I feel exactly what you're saying, man. Cause like I, I don't lie, I be noticing that sometimes when I see like certain hoods that supposedly that supposedly like it's like a lot of rappers there, right? Certain hoods they might not be together all the time on camera, and you might and you might think, oh, they probably don't fuck with each other. But it's like, and and it's like, damn. So since they don't fuck with each other, it's like they probably not gonna really be as big as they should be. Cause it's like it's little, it's little to no unity. But they could they could be on good terms, but it's like they don't be working together all the time, and it's like it's really like an individual thing. So like I see I see that a lot in the city. So it's just motherfuckers like for themselves doing it for themselves type shit. It's like yeah, that's what it's I've been saying. Point. It's to the point now, like you know what I mean, air man for themselves, God for everybody. 
And then, like I said, people on the outside looking in look like, you know, certain people don't fuck with certain people. And it's fucked up because to the public, that's what it looked like. But behind closed doors, we talk to each other on the phone. We check on each other. Somebody going through some motherfuckers is, is, is there for each other. But at the same time, to the world, it look like we don't fuck with each other. Exactly. Shit. But speaking on some music shit, like you in particular, like you recently took a long break from dropping music. So what made you take that break? 